Life Live with host and founder of New Life Ministries, Stephen Arterburn. New Life Live is dedicated to transforming lives one at a time, thanks to the giving hearts of you, our listeners. Our goal is to provide you with wisdom from God's Word to give you hope and help in life's hardest places. If you have a question you'd like to ask today, our phone lines are open. Call 1-800-229-3000. That number again is 1-800-229-3000. Now here's Steve. Hello there and welcome to New Life Live on Giving Tuesday as everybody's talking about it. Joining me, giving of her time, Dr. Jill Hubbard, and giving of his time and wisdom, Dr. Dave Stoop. And Jill's giving wisdom too. Hi guys, how you doing? Hey, good to be here. Hi Steve, and you as well. Very wise. Yes. Thank you very much. And hilarious. So, (laughs) So it is Giving Tuesday and last year we talked about Giving Tuesday, and I have to tell you, the results were zero. <laughs> so, and here's why: we New Life's audience is so giving anyway. We All don't year need long. Yeah. Giving Tuesday f- to, to make something happen. It it just uh, and then s- fifthly, I think. Uh, well, it's in the wrong order. You you don't go to Black Friday and go spend all your money there, and what you got left you spend on Cyber Monday, and then if you have any change left, you give it. We know you give out of the first fruits. I mean, right. in fact, it's kind of guilt giving, isn't it? Says, the opposite. It's guilt giving. Yeah. Yes. Well, you Jesus feel so guilty says, for all you spent. Go, sorry, 10%, Steve. The, the first ten percent is Jesus would say, "Well, that's his. It's not yeah. a matter of giving it. It's that's his." And and so and to me, that's pretty amazing when you think about farmers that would hmm. grow this great crop and the first fruit. You know, oh wow, it's finally here. You would give that first fruit to the church, and that's pretty amazing. I think. But that's the way it is. So anyway, we are not celebrating Giving Tuesday. I'm calling it Tired Tuesday because <laughs> I'm tired of talking about all this stuff. And But and, if you want to give, we, it's okay. <laughs> if you want it, fine. But we talked all about this last time, last year, and then we figured out it's not a big deal because, you know what, our people, they give faithfully. Generous people plan on giving. They don't just, like, throw some some coins at something and uh, anyway so i'm happy about our situation and tomorrow we'll tell you about some pretty amazing uh stuff and uh that uh, you know we talked yesterday about people wanting their gifts to be matched well boy has that created something tell you all about that tomorrow anyway we're we're on the radio and if you want to join us we want you to join us at 1-800-229-3 Two two nine three thousand, and all we want you to give us is your attention. Now, a lot of narcissists, you know, that's all they want to give is their opinion. <laughs> we want to, we want you to give us your attention. Uh, let us help in any way possible. And to that end, I'm jumping on the phone to Sherry from Flagstaff, Arizona, listening on Sirius XM. Sherry, how you doing today? I'm good. How are you? Great. We're glad that you called us on Giving Tuesday, and we'd like to give you two cents worth of advice here today, or even more valuable. What? How can we help today? What's going on? Well, um, my husband and I, we have two girls, and uh, one's 37, one's 35. The older one, since she's been 16, has been combative, name-calling, just anything she can do to cause problems. Oh, and boy. every holiday, she sabotages the holidays so that really? we can't get together as a family. And I just, I, I have, by reading the book from the Emotionally Destructive Relationship, Leslie Vernick, mm-hmm. um, I, I know that's more on marriages, but she does touch a little bit on relationships. All right, Sherry, we're going to go to the, we're going to go to a break, Sherry. So hold on. And I want to know... How this this daughter has so much power over it. She's one of the most powerful people I've ever, ever heard of that can sabotage these holidays. We'll be back after this. I feel blessed to have had this opportunity for my needs to be met. Connecting with other women who are fighting the same fight 
hoping for healthy marriages and growing closer to the Lord on their journey. My name is Shelly Martinkus, and I want to personally invite you to the Restore Workshop. If you have been affected by betrayal, it might be that your husband has been looking at pornography. It might be an emotional, a physical affair. I would love for to come join us. I feel encouraged and hopeful that even in my struggle, I am enough. You will leave with hope, with a community of sisters ready to support you, and you will also leave with tools to move you forward on this journey. Through the sharing in our small group, I realize that I am not alone. Please don't hesitate. Pick up the phone. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. I would love to see you there. The Restore Workshop is coming to Southern California February 28th to March the 1st. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE to find out more. That's 1-800-639-5433 or online at newlife.com. To find out more information about New Life or to order any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Now back to New Life Live. We're back. Steve Arterburn here with Dr. Dave Stoop, Dr. Jill Hubbard. If you want to join us, as they say where I come from, you just dial 1-800-229-3000. 1-800-229-3000. It's Giving Tuesday. We are, I'm going to call it Taking Tuesday because we're taking your phone calls and really glad that Sherry has called us. Now, Sherry, how in the world does this oldest daughter have so much power that she can sabotage the rest of you guys getting together? How does that work? Uh, no, I mean, we get together, the rest of us do, but we don't with her. Um, okay. Because cause my daughter now is, uh, the younger one, is now at the point where she says, um, we can't have her over here anymore. So if you want to go see her, you can. But I, I've decided through reading this book to kind of take a break from her, and I, I told her that um, until she can get some help and get on medication or something, I mean, really, she... She gets like she flies off the handle, throws things, okay. yells. Mm. Just oh wow! Well, Sherry, uh, it, <laughs> it, it's very sad, but it sounds like to me that the younger sister has made an appropriate decision. You can't be here if you're going to do that, and that you're making uh, a good decision here also. That you're going to take a break. That that sends a, a message that nothing else does. Well, yeah, and I know in the book it says that, you know, you're going to feel bad about it, and I do. Mm -hmm, I feel like a bad mother doing that. I don't want to disown my children, and I told her I'm not disowning you, but I, I'm, I'm just, I don't know what else to do. I can't help her until she wants to be helped, so I just yeah. mm -hmm. wonder if you well, have here, any suggestions. Yeah. Okay, so, we're going to hear some suggestions, so the, but first I want to give you one little perspective, okay. and that is this, Sherry. Here's what a bad mother does when a daughter is like this. The bad mother says to her, oh, honey, it's okay to be like this. We all love you like this. You just keep on being like this. Of course, that's the real bad mother, and you're not doing that. You're saying, I've got no. to give her a different message, mm -hmm. and that's what good mothers do. Okay, Jim, well, what do you or, think? Or cowards to it and, you know, just caters to her every whim, Yeah, right? right to avoid well, you know i've kind of done that over the years where i've just stayed non-confrontational right. no comment okay just just to keep peace but now it's been the work, point where now i can't no. do that anymore and so i picked up this book i i took at one of your conferences one mm -hmm. time take your life back in texas and i started reading it and i was like wow this is so appropriate but just i'm proud of you for what you're doing yeah. and and the um <laughs> The additional advice from me is get support so you can keep on doing what you're yeah. doing and not give up when, boy, she really turns. I mean, because if she's who I think she is, when you start to react to it and respond appropriately, she's going to turn up the heat a little bit. Yes. So you got to be ready yeah, for that. Yeah, she did. She yeah, blamed it all on me and said mm -hmm. it was all my oh, fault sure. and, and her sister's fault. And, you know, all <laughs> three of her children have been taken away from her. She has another oh, one now from oh, another marriage. Oh. And she isn't raising them. She has her 13-year-old daughter back now, and she gave her the advice about smoking pot, that she'd rather have her do that than, drop, than alcohol. Mm, which she nope. got suspended from a school for being caught twice, and, and I kind of laid into her for that a few months back. But it's just, I don't know, it's just, you just can't reason with her. And 
So and what? So what you're doing? So what you're doing is is part of the consequence is loss of relationship because we can destroy relationships, right? I, I right. know that right. kids think that our parents are gonna, you know, that they're that we're supposed to love them no matter what, but everybody reaches a point where things can be destroyed, and it's important for them to know that that they can destroy things. And so to take a step back at times when nothing else has worked so that she experience the, experiences the loss, I think is important. But you're gonna, Dave, you're, you gonna struggle, here? you're gonna struggle with the bad feelings that the, your mm -hmm. bad mother, and you, you really need to have supportive people around you that, that will encourage you when things get tough and when, she, when your daughter amps up the, the pressure and the guilt and... Um. Actually, I do just sometimes, you know, I try not to uh, overuse my, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, friendship mm -hmm. with people on that because mm -hmm. I know it can drive people crazy. But I do have a really yeah. good friend whose daughter was just like Jennifer, and she's been suicidal at times, too. Mm -hmm. And her daughter actually did carry through with it. So um, oh. quite a few years ago. But I guess that's always a fear of mine. And, and I know if that happens, that's not my fault. But Well, you, you can't do anything really to... To stop it well, after a and certain I was point. Gonna no, say, when I was talking about her amping up here, uh, that I wouldn't be surprised if there wasn't some kind of threat or even an attempt in that area if she doesn't get you to comply and acquiesce and all of that. Right. Yeah. But maybe because she has her daughter living with her, uh, that would maybe put that in check a little bit. Well, I th I think too, I so. Sheila, is that you, you effectively backed out of the relationship for a while. I did, and, yeah. And I think that's what she she wants. She wants to be left alone. And uh, you may not have an amp up. I hope you don't have an amp up. But if you do, that's where your your support people are really going to be important. Well, mm -hmm. and then that's uh, true. I, I, you know. I, I don't know that this is her, but there's some characteristics here. But mm -hmm. I'm going to send you this book, Understanding and Loving a Person with Borderline Personality Disorder. And I think it's going to help you uh, with some strategies with her, whether she is borderline or not. I think it can really be Sometimes a big people have help. traits or features yes. of yeah. that. <clears throat> she has a few mm -hmm. of those yes. traits and, yeah. yes. and features, she as does. we call them. And, and I don't know, Sherry, if you... Are, have any contact with the grandchildren that were taken away if you're able to be involved the with the other dad another dad the other, yeah i do okay i'm not like constant contact okay. but i do have contact but, but that with them. but that is something to feed into the next generation right to try you to bet. make a difference yep. there mm -hmm. okay so understanding and loving a person with borderline personality disorder that's one thing that's coming your way and i'm going to send you how we love our kids uh, because I think that'll be a big help to you also. So glad you called. 1-800-229-3000. That's the number. 1-800-229-3000. Let's go to Robbie. Quakerstown, Pennsylvania. W-B-Y-N. Love that station. Hi, Robbie. How are you? Uh, not too good these days, but um, we are holding on. Um, okay. I just well, want to ask you a question. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. I okay. I just want to thank you for everything you do for everybody. Uh, you guys are truly a blessing. Um, thank you. My husband and I have a son, 37, that he was just put in jail because um, he beat up his wife and their five-year-old oh. autistic child. Oh, no. um, the first time he's been in jail. So my daughter, I only have two. My daughter, she's 32 now. Um, just confess to me. She feels safe to confess to me that he sexually abused her since she was seven years old all the way until 12 years old. Mm. And um, and we, we don't want nothing to do with him, nothing. Um, this this is being a, a role of, of never ending stuff that he's been doing. And um, and this was the one that tipped it over the eyes. You know, we just don't want anything to do with him. So my question is, my daughter say, I say, why you uh, didn't compel to tell me? And she said, well, he threatened me. She said, he always put in my mind that if 
if I say something that I would be destroying the family. Yeah, and right. more oh. that if she That's that what if they she do. say something yeah, so and and more that if she says something that she will kill my husband and I. Right. Oh. So now That's what I don't they want do. nothing to do with him. I uh huh. I'm conscious about that. But uh, what's the now, question for us, Robbie? Come, what's the, the question, question for is us? now when he come out of jail, whenever it is, I don't want him nothing to do with my daughter because we are dealing with emotional issue with her and everything. Mm -hmm. And should I tell him that we know now the whole truth? You should tell. That because we, I'm you sorry. should tell the My authorities. Daughter. You should tell someone mm -hmm. that this man that is in jail, that's related to you, molested mm -hmm. your daughter from age seven to twelve. Has never received any kind of treatment for that problem, and has threatened to kill you and your husband if she ever told anyone. That's what needs to be known. Absolutely. I wouldn't say a word to him. What would it help for him to know that you know? Let's think that through. How would that help anything for him to know that she told you? Uh, in, my, in my position, he, w he always uh, been close to her. You know, even after she grew up and everything, and and I just don't want him to bother her anymore. Well, that would tend to make him want to bother her in a harmful way once he's out of jail. Not saying if anything. You, mm -hmm. If you talk to folks about this, perhaps they would keep him in jail because I think a lot of people's lives are in danger by him he should never get out of jail he beat up an autistic child he molested another child he beat up his wife he should stay in jail and you should help me the... talk... yeah sorry. What? we talk about it with her and she said to me mom i don't they want to come they're probably going to call me to me to testify and everything i don't want to go through all that pain anymore so because she's uh, in my stay when he passed 20 years 20 years you cannot do nothing, uh, accusing him of nothing. Mm -hmm. So okay. that, that's my problem. But you okay. can still report it. It's still you information. It, put it in the file. They know mm -hmm. this. And when he comes up for parole, it needs to be in the file. Right. See? You may not be able well, to go to trial, but it needs to be in the paper trail. Yeah. So when you say tell, tell the authority, the people from the jail or the local policeman for my town well i would i would uh, at least call um and ask to talk with who makes decisions about people getting out on parole or not which is a parole board okay and say i need to okay. talk to them they need to know something and they mm -hmm. and when you talk with them you say i know the statute of limitations have run out but you need to know that this this son of ours molested our daughter, and and, and we just found out about us, it. Yeah, yeah, we just found out, and she told us that she never told us because he said, "If you ever tell anyone, I will kill mom and dad." And so now she's told, and we feel like our lives are going to be uh, threatened if he gets out of prison. They just need to know that information, okay? Okay. And him. Knowing that you know, I don't think that Doesn't, really no. serves That's not any hurt. purpose. You might say, well, then he'll feel really bad. I don't think he has any feelings. No. He doesn't have a conscience. I, that, He's a sociopath. Exactly. Sociopaths yeah, that's right. beat up five-year-old autistic children. Exactly and it's very, it very sad yeah. that this is, wow. has happened. All right. Okay, so well, we'll do what you say. Thank you so much. Okay, Thank I'm glad that calling. you called. And uh, I'm going to send you a Restoration Bible, leather cover. It's an amazing Bible that will help you in your journey. And, well, I know these are mm. tough, tough times, but, oh, my goodness. It's a tough thing as a parent. You know, every time uh, someone like this has a thought, oh, there's hope. I'll get out of prison one day soon and all that. They don't change. Uh, the worse it gets, somehow, sometimes the uh, that and the power of the Holy Spirit can finally create the miracle. But man, 
It's a horrible situation. We're going to take a break and come back here on Taking Tuesday. We'll take your calls at 1-800-229-3000. By the way, you can listen to this program on the app, the New Life app. Go to the App Store, download. Got the tree right there at the brain in the middle. Why the brain, not the heart? Because the Bible says if we could just change the way we think, we could experience a transformed life. All right. Really glad you're with us here today. 1-800-NEW-LIFE. If you need some help or you want to help us, 1-800-229-3000 to be on radio. Do you have the new calendar for the new year? It's coming right up. You can get it from us, gift of any amount. I'll just send that right out to you. We'll be back after this. My wife asked me for the first time in 2011 if I would consider myself a sex addict, so I signed up. You know, I'd read the Every Man's Battle book, and it was a great book, but the workshop, it was the experience that really was key for me. If, if they go to EMB, they're going to be in good hands. You know, this is a safe place. They're going to be surrounded by men that simply walk the talk. The weekend leaders that they will go through this workshop with, they'll help them to get to the root of their issues. You know, I've been through a number of well-preached sermons listened to and read countless books, um, been to a number of seminars, but EMB for me was, it was a game changer. It truly saved my life. Being in this community, being in this workshop, being around these men will change them if they'll let them. You're going to encounter men that will meet you where you're at, and you will instantly walk into a safe place where they're welcome. If you're struggling, call us. We don't want you to go on struggling. Just give us a call. It's 1-800-639-5433. It's 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Hi, this is Steve Arterburn, and for 30 years, New Life has been the most trusted name in Christian counseling. I'm an addict, and I'm trying to get God in my life again. You seem to be able to get to the crux of the problem quickly. Our Christ-centered treatment programs can help you break free to embrace all that God has for you and your family. I just want to thank you guys for bringing me to a relationship with Jesus. There really is help for marital problems, depression, addictions, panic attacks, and feelings of hopelessness. I came back with so many tools to help me prepare myself to fight this struggle and this battle that I have every day. You can start living again today, living the life God intended for you. Help is available at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. They did care, and they did follow up very lovingly, and it made all the difference in my life. Call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Someone who cares is waiting at the other end of the phone. God can open the door to a better tomorrow right now. Just call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. 1-800-639-5433. love to hear from you. Talk with Lexi from Billings, Montana. Listens on the internet. Glad she does. Hi there. Lexi, how are you? Hello. I'm really scared right now. Oh. Hmm. Well... Well, just take your time. We're we're gonna, yeah, we're in no hurry. What's going on? I'm just really, really nervous because I can't even be still in my house. I'm just pacing because something has happened. And like, I'm married, and the person I'm married to, we're both Christians, and we supposedly live our life that way. But I, this is my second, my third marriage, and his third marriage. I was in my first marriage, married 31 years, and had. That first husband was an addict to everything, so I got cheated on many times, pornography, showed it to my children. He did a lot of things that were damaging. Moved on to a different relationship who wasn't supposedly involved with pornography. Lie, it was a total lie, and he was. So now I'm married to this man, and it sounds horrible this whole life, but he is a Christian, and I know he loves God. I know that part about him, but he's not being intimate with me. Um... It's so embarrassing to say these things, but he, can you hear me? Yes. We can hear you. We're listening. Okay. We're with you. So, so um, I'm just going to use current situation. For in the last month, I would say we've had sex four times, and none of them were for me. Zero. There's no intimacy for me. So, and he's not a very connecting person with the heart. Mm-hmm. I'm feeling really lonely. I'm mm-hmm. feeling like 
something's happening that I don't know about. I feel mistrust. I feel a lot of feelings. So I bring it up to him to ask what's going on. Why why are you not like connecting with me? Why are why is there mm-hmm. so much silence and all this stuff? And ultimately, we get onto the sexual subject. And um, I asked him, why are we not having intimacy together very often? And when we do, you know, it's not satisfying for me. And so here's what he told me. He goes, do you really want to go there? <laughs> which made me say, uh, yeah, I really, really do. To mm-hmm. which he said, well, you just have a lot more difficult time than I do. Okay, so mm-hmm. there's a lot of stuff happening in my emotions. I've already triggered by my past. I already mm-hmm. know that, and I already feel yeah. like I'm not enough, and I feel like, you know, I'm never going to be. So mm-hmm. now I know that I'm too difficult, and I feel used. I feel like, so it's okay when you want to do what you want to do, but it's too hard for you to want to make your wife feel good, but you can be on your phone after you get home from work for five hours playing a game or this or that. Do you see what I mean? Mm-hmm. Sure. Mm-hmm. Sure. Did I make sense at all? Oh, yep. yeah. You, you yeah. make total You're making sense. perfect sense. And I understand and why you feel so anxious given your history sure. here. I can't yeah, even I'm really glad you called. All I do is wash the room to room. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Lexi, what? what, sorry, what guys, it's okay. I really it's just okay. Want to break down. <laughs> it's okay. What no. are you doing to get some help and support for yourself? So I don't know exactly what I should do because this happened a year ago that I did find out that he was masturbating in our closet. He admitted mm-hmm. at that time. So okay. when I asked him, "Is he still doing that?" He won't answer. So I feel mm-hmm. like that must mean yes because of the okay. way our life is right now. But he won't right. say. So last okay. year when it happened, I totally said, you need to go to every man's battle, and I need you to put covenant eyes on your computer, and blah, 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 and I needed those things done, and he was willing, but then he got nice to me in the next couple of days, and I'm a failure at this, and I said, you don't have to do any of that, mm. but please, could you just be more be more affirming in my life by saying you love me a little more often, because I never hardly hear that. Could you tell me I look nice or I'm cute or I'm pretty or anything just to make me feel like I'm noticed by you? Could you do some of those things? Like he said he would, and it's still not happening. So now I'm like, okay. so okay. I didn't follow through. Yeah, I'm okay. sorry. So Go ahead, look, Steve. all right. Well, a lot of women in your situation don't follow through. It's hard to know what to do. It's embarrassing. This isn't something that you're out there sharing with everybody so you just have to give yourself a break you've done the best that you could and so now we're just up against what's the best course now given all that's happened you know we want we want the best thing to happen okay and so i say i think we're right back at he needs to be at every man's battle right that's what I thought, too, and mm-hmm. I told him that. I said, right now, I feel uh-huh. like I'm on that day we were at last year, and I want all those things to happen again. Okay, and, and you're entitled okay. to that. Okay, and okay. so now we, we have to decide, when he doesn't agree with that, what are you willing to do? I don't know what to do. I don't know. Okay, this is that, why that you need you need to be in a support group with some other women that have been in the same place that can support you if he isn't willing to go and you've got to make some really tough demands on him to get better. Okay. So that you don't, you know, cave in this time. You know. Yeah. Right? But I also think you need to be in some individual therapy, Lexi. Absolutely. Because you need somebody who can walk through this with you on a regular basis here. Okay, yeah, so because you're, you're getting saying, triggered so that you can distinguish yeah. what's what's the present versus the past that's getting put on the present. Yeah. And you're not, you're right? not just dealing yeah, with yeah. his behavior towards you. It's there's uh, The no. pornography's got to be the big issue. It's yeah. mm-hmm. lurking there and, in the background. Yeah. And this this person can say, okay, here's what I did, and, and he did this. And and then, you know, you are you got a different strategy. But I think this is a, a situation where You're really going to have to... Well, we'll talk about it right after this. For most of 
through my life, I've been dealing with an opiate addiction. Why is opioid addiction quickly becoming one of our nation's biggest killers? Maybe it's because it isn't only those who are addicted who are in denial. We did what I see so many parents do, is it can't be an addiction. There's something medically wrong. It's impossible to solve a problem when you don't know what you're up against, and families will try to find any explanation except the one that will put them on the right path. Alcoholism and drug addiction is a family disease. It doesn't affect just the individual. If someone you love is abusing painkillers, know what you're up against. It's time to admit it's addiction and seek treatment. Call us today at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. We have Christ-centered partner treatment centers around the country. Call 1-800-639-5433 or visit us online at newlife.com. We just made a decision. We will do whatever it takes. 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Hi, this is Steve Arterburn, and for 30 years, New Life has been the most trusted name in Christian counseling. Your ministry has saved my life. If you struggle with emotional hurt, family or marriage problems, the pit of depression, or the pain of addictions, we can help. I'm down 100 pounds now from what I was. You guys are awesome. You are a blessing to America. <laughs> Our treatment programs provide clinically appropriate solutions from licensed professionals, all in the biblical framework. I have had problems with alcohol. I think God has ordained this place to be his. You don't have to be a prisoner of your pain. Help is available at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. She tells me that I'm a new man and I feel like a new man. It worked for me and it can work for them too. This time it is different. If you're ready to take the first step toward genuine spiritual and emotional healing, please call us today at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. God can open the door to a better tomorrow right now. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's 1-800-639-5433. Glad you joined us for New Life Live. To be a part of the program, call 1-800-229-3000. Now back to New Life Live. We're back. Just finishing up here with Lexi. Really glad that you've called. And Jill was just talking about and saying well, what we were all feeling. We feel for you. This is yes, really, really yes. tough. Yes, yes. And it is, again, so hard because of your, your past. And so I think, though, that you can use that to also get him to get some help with you, Lexi, by saying that you're having a hard time sorting out what's the present and what's the past. And you need him to come to some marital therapy with you to help sort that out because you want to make sure that you are being clear in this relationship so that the two of you, you know, and looking at your part, because if you make him just uh -huh. all the bad one, you know, he's already avoidant. Right. He's going to resist that. So say, I need you to come and help me sort out, you know, what what's me? What am I doing here? And why are we having these blocks to our, our marriage? Um, that mm -hmm. you, you need someone professional. And so it's it's I always say you kind of start with the, you know, the least invasive and then you add more and more as needed, right? So okay, you well, get into you and, get into and, therapy. Thanks. You guys get into marital therapy. You ask him to go to every man's battle. I mean, these are some big things. They yeah, are. and you know, here's a here's kind of an overriding concept that you might want to present to him, which is really hard for a guy like him to hear. But you might want to yeah. say this: I think it's time that we figure out if we have a marriage. And if we have a future, because right now we don't have much of a marriage and I don't think we have a future. So I want you to join me and I want us to get some help and I want you to get some help and whether or not you get some help with this problem, I think has a lot to do with what's going on with our future. It's not just you. I've made some mistakes, too. We need to figure out yeah. if there's anything here. Well, right. And we've both been married okay. three times, and we yeah. can't right. seem to get it right. And I don't think right. it's just about finding the right person. <laughs> right. I agree. It is not. Right? So yeah. are you willing? And is it normal for me to, can I ask a question? Sure. Yeah. Is it normal for me to be feeling so devastated and betrayed right now? Yes. I mean, yes, it's absolutely. very normal. I'm consumed by that. It's, yes. yes. Okay. It is normal. Thank you. It is very normal because, and it's the nightmare of, oh my gosh, it's happening again. 
But there has to be consequences, Lexi, in terms of if he doesn't follow through, you've got to be willing to act on some consequences and let him know in advance that there's consequences. Even a legal separation is, is a consequence that may be important to hold up there and, and be willing to, to take that step if you have to. Mm-hmm. Okay. So... Okay, it's thank tough. you guys. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm going to send you uh, Take Your Life Back, and I'm going to send you Worthy of Her Trust, and I want you to give that to him, mm-hmm. and I want that to be part of this. But really, getting a great, great, wonderful counselor, female to help you here, yeah. get through this support group, these are really, really but, important things. Yeah, and, and and let me just add one more point, Lexi. What you're feeling is a signal that something isn't right. All that anxiety, right, and and panic and, and desperation, that's telling you something's amiss, something is wrong. And that's what you're trying to sort through and figure out. What is it? If, if I were you, I would attempt this to see what would happen. I would say, if you want this marriage to continue... If you don't want all of this to blow up, you go to Denver this Friday and you get in every man's battle. I'm going to get into counseling myself to take care of my stuff, but none of this is going to be worth it unless you deal with Mm -hmm. this problem. And you say this, I know you want to get rid of the problem. You know it's killing you, three marriages, all this stuff. Go. And for everybody else, Friday is the last Every Man's Battle this year, and it's in Denver, and you can get there. And if somebody you care about needs it, you ought to just tell them, go and get it taken care of. It's Friday. It's just in a few days. It could change everything. 1-800-N-E-W-L-I-F-E. Let's go to John. Vancouver, British Columbia, listens on the Internet. How you doing? Good, thanks. How are you? Great. What's going on? Good. Well, um, I heard uh, the caller yesterday. It was, um, I think, the second caller. And uh, the, the man there, he talked about um, his wife. And Mylon addressed it, and he said, um, uh, well, this guy was he was concerned about his wife, uh, who previously had an affair. And, and Mylon pretty much nailed it when he said his wife was emotionally and physically promiscuous and yeah. flirtatious. And I thought, wow, he's talking about my wife. Mm. And uh, so what happened is, uh, yeah, five years ago, my wife had an affair and subsequently moved out. But just before that, my mom also talked about losses and that sort of thing. And and so what happened before that is in 2013, our, our grandson um, moved away, uh, about 1,000 miles away. And my wife was very attached to him. And, and she pretty much blamed that on me because... Our son, I didn't. Uh, um, she thought I should have taken him into the into my my business, uh, but he really didn't want to do that at the time. Anyhow, he wanted they wanted to move to his wife's hometown, which is like a thousand miles away. They had lived here for five years. I thought, well, we'll live over there for five years, and then we'll see what happens after that. But okay, so what's going wife, on it, now? It, so right now, well, we've been separated. Then, so she had an affair after that, and then our youngest son moved out at this around the same time. She had an affair. And uh, after that, when we found out, um, she then moved out, and she's just been, um, yeah, um, as our counselor put it, playing the field ever since. Mm. And, uh, mm. and as she says, now she's kind of sort of seeing someone, but she keeps it all very hush. Um, the last thing I want to do is, is, is be divorced, but this could go on another 20 or more years, um, uh, the way things are going. And, What's um, the question for us then? In my court, but um, in that she's just waiting for divorce papers. But she also will say in the same conversation that she would like to make our family whole again. But so I get you know both sides. Um, yeah, you know, what does that look like divorce. to her? Yeah, it's just this. She says that's what I deserve, divorce, and and but yeah, I know that you know what I've done is wrong, but yeah, and okay. so. I mean, it's, it's uh, every year at the beginning of the year, I say, okay, this is the year we're going to get things sorted out because this can't go on forever. I mean, you know, like it's been five, six years that I've been on the sideline, 
know, next mm-hmm. year I turn 60, and I, you know, I don't want to spend it from 60 to 80 or whatever. So I wonder, like John, that. who you are to her, because she's attached to everybody else but you. You know, all the yeah, sons, and, and yet, the sons the and grandsons focus. and other people. Yeah. yeah. Great question. So I'm yeah. wondering who you <laughs> represent to her that well, she's running from. And I don't mean that yeah. th- that it's personally you. I think there's a lot being projected onto you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. All right, I, unresolved. I, I, I think stuff. Yeah, I mean, she doesn't ever ask for a divorce. You know, she's no, but I, but are you, know, you dad? Knows. Are you you know? You yeah. heard you yeah. heard dad. I'm the bill payer. I know that. Yeah. Um, so she feels she feels she wants to know well, you're my rock. Um, so she feels very comfortable um, trusting me and whatnot. Um, Which are you know, great things, but you want to be her partner. Yeah, exactly. You want to be yeah. her romantic connection. Yeah, yeah. You want uh, intimacy I, there. Yeah, and I yeah. think um, I think she's probably a master manipulator, mm-hmm. don't you? Oh, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Yeah, this thing of, of I want a, this thing of I want a divorce, but I want to make our family whole. It could be, man, why don't you divorce me? But be real nice to me and uh, don't make yeah. it too hard on me. Uh, I, I, yeah. I I would I would wonder if she would do anything with you to repair the marriage. Have you asked her to do anything well, to repair the marriage? Yeah, we went, um, I mean, I've seen a counselor off and on the last, well, ever since she left, and um, last year about this time, um, I went to visit him, and he said, well, here's here's like a last-ditch last, last ditch thing. Let's just see if she wants to come to an intensive. Um, and so she said, okay, um, but like I'll do like a half a day. I'm not doing more than that, and then we'll go from there. And so we did that, and then it was up to her to basically decide, okay, do we want to move forward with a restore or not? And, you know, you never hear anything back, of course, right? And then, so I don't think forward. anything good is going to happen until you file for divorce. Yeah. That's what I think. Yeah, and I've I think that. then once I've, she I've sees this... Well, sure. <laughs> and then once she sees the strength and the action, she might respond in a different way. But more of the same, more of this accommodation and stuff, I don't think it's going to get you anywhere except wasting your time. My thought. We'll be back after this. She said, we need to talk. She asked me for the first time if I would consider myself a sex addict. You know, I thought it was just about admitting the things that I had done wrong. I, I never had a clue that it was about redeeming our story you know I thought it was just about coming clean on what I had done I had no idea how to help her with her pain she was a mess I was a mess and and we got divorced going to EMB surrounding myself with these other men they accepted me for who I was and what I had done but they challenged me to step up and do better you know they'll be around other men who are not just pointing the finger but um, willing to get in and wade through it with you know get in the trenches they'll get hope from this workshop take my sweet wife and my story we were divorced remarried and on our way to what I think uh, will be the sweetest years of our lives. You know, it's no longer simply about surviving for the first time ever. You know, we're thriving, we're enjoying where we're at. Hey, listen, if you're struggling, we want to see you at the workshop. Give us a call, 1-800-NEW-LIFE. I was really living a very anxiety-filled life. I turned on New Life, and the topic that day was about anxiety. And just by listening, I got relief. You can help New Life Live stay in the air by joining Club New Life today. When you sign up to support us monthly through Club New Life, we'll send you a set of four devotionals, 100 Days of Character, Peace, Prayer, and the newly released 100 Days of Healing. Plus, there are ongoing benefits, like access to the Club New Life video library, the monthly Club New Life CD or download, quarterly resources, free shipping on purchase resources and discounts on workshops. I did go to Take Your Life Back. That's been immensely helpful to me. That's why 
I continue to support the ministry with the hope that it not only am I helping my own situation, that I'm helping others as well. Support Club New Life, and together we can help hurting people find help and hope in life's hardest places. Call 1-800-639-5433 to join Club New Life today. To find out more information about New Life or to order any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Now, back to New Life Live. We're back. Steve Arderman here. Really glad that you're with us here today. Joining me, Dr. Jill Hubbard, Dr. Dave Stoop, and we're, we're talking with John. And John, uh, we want the marriage to stay together. It, I think the only way, as I said, that it's going to stay together is you really have to come across to her as a strong determined man and you maybe it she has to get divorce papers before she sees that you're serious and then she responds and um i just i hope and uh pray. well she has to see something different than the steady eddie well right? she's, she's yeah. got to she's got to Does face that, the fact that she's going to lose one or the other right. either the she family or her husband she can't have both and hold on to it like she's been holding on to it Okay, so um, hope and pray that that's going to help you. If you could get her to our intensive February the 14th, that would be pretty amazing. And uh, I would just hope and pray uh, you could do that. But, man, don't let her manipulate you anymore. She has been unfaithful, and uh, you know, I think it's time to act all right let's go to uh how about we talk with uh jay here jay i don't have a lot of time but i did want to get to your call how you doing i'm doing all right great how could we help okay i've been talking to you uh i'll say in the last few weeks um and i'm getting ready to get a divorce the my husband he of only four months it was his idea to get the divorce so he could move on. Hmm. Uh, I gave the marriage 150%. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, I didn't listen, number one, I didn't listen to the Lord. I asked God to forgive me for not being obedient. And I know he has forgiven me. I want mm-hmm. to know, uh, will I be able to have a ever have another relationship? Because I desire not to be uh, long. I'm not alone, but I'm lonely. Mm-hmm. And if I will, could ever remarry, that's my question. Well, okay. So, Jill, what do you think here? Based, mm-hmm. do you need to ask some more questions, or what? What do you think would yeah, be the answer? Yeah. Well, I, I guess I'm, I'm not clear on why you're divorcing. Other than, is it abandonment? Is Hila, he-, he has left me three times, and he claim I am a staunch. Uh, well, I shouldn't say staunch Christian, mm-hmm. but uh, he has PSDT, which he's taking medicine for that. But he hallucinates. Okay. Uh, he would hit me in the bed. Uh, he uh, accused me uh, every day of of adultery. I'm a mm-hmm. slut. Uh, so he has uh, some horror. I have never, ever, ever did that. I'm 68 years old. And uh, I was married before him uh, for 35 years. Okay. And so I would never do that, you know. Right. Well, so, this is a horrible, and, and, horrible way to live. And um, I, I think, well, the, your question is, are you free to remarry? And one of the criteria is desertion. Mm-hmm. by a non-believer here and he's left you nine times and he's not getting help and um, I, I think there is is a case to be made that this is one of those situations mm-hmm. where you know you're free and uh, a lot of folks think just because you're free to divorce doesn't mean you're free to remarry under those criteria that Jesus laid out there adultery and and being abandoned by a non-believer, but I, I do think this falls in there. Dave, you have a, th- a thought about this? Yeah, I, I think so. I, I think there's some things you need to do before that happens in terms of getting your own life on track mm-hmm. uh, with uh, with or without him and getting, getting into counseling for yourself 
and looking at what life is going to be if he if he doesn't come back and then you you don't want him to come back and being able to confidently face the future and then ask this uh, that, that question you're you're asking us because at that point you'll be better able to answer it appropriately very good point dave right. all right well all of you you know all of these different problems that have come up uh, today, many of them you they could be helped at our intimacy and in marriage on the 14th of February. Many issues. Maybe you're listening. Every man's battle is Friday in Denver, and you could get this taken care of. Restore comes up in February. Also, we have so many opportunities. Counselors in your area, resources. You call us at 1-800 New Life, and we'll try to help you in the very best way possible to do that we need your support and to talk about that larry's here larry let's talk about our need for support well it's always a real need but at december it's really a real need it's the time of year that we kind of catch up a little bit where people who don't typically give will give at your end so i just want to put our name i mean i'm getting more mail this year from uh, different ministries and organizations for support at home and so I can see that uh, so many people are looking. They, everybody's got their hand out. And I want ours to be there amongst them so because what we do makes a difference. Mm -hmm. And I it's was transformation is uh, what we do. We, a lady wrote us and said, my youngest son just turned 41. I remembered calling you about him when he was 18. I mean, 23 years he was getting mm -hmm. into drugs then. Dr. Stoop answered, gave me good advice. Now this young man's successful tech expert, happily married, buying a new home. What could wow. be better than that? That is a success story I mean, over yeah. the long it term. Really is. Yeah, it's long term right? and it's real. And if you have been a supporter of New Life financially, you're a part of that transformation. Mm -hmm. And I just want to say thank you for that. And uh, what could be better? What could be better than a, a transformed life, somebody's life that was in darkness now sees the light and is, it, they're working on it. Life is different. That's what we're about. Well, you know, 31 years ago, some people put some money into this organization and they said, go change some people's lives. And thousands upon thousands have been changed through a radio program, through a book, a counselor, one of our intensives. Transformation has occurred. We have never been anything but about transforming lives, not making people feel better, also not making or shaming them uh, out of you know some feeling or sense of superiority. We want to help folks. And if you have a heart for helping folks, help us help others. Steve, I also want to just encourage people that we are looking for giving from your heart, giving because you want to give. We're not asking don't give unless you can give this much. If you can give five dollars, we it's a it's a wonderful gift. Mm -hmm. If you can give ten, fifty, hundred, whatever it is, we're just asking you to make that decision. Giving's between you and God. It's not yeah. what we're telling you you have to give. And you can give through Club New Life. You can be a monthly partner. We've got great videos on our our uh, video library for you, and great thank you gifts. You can give with a one time gift. You can make a stock donation. You could remember us in your estate plans. There's so, mm -hmm. so many ways to give. And I just we're just looking for people with uh, grateful hearts. That's all we're asking for. So on Taking Tuesday, we're just suggesting <laughs> take a few minutes, take a few minutes, and really ask God, where, where could got Larry my support, <laughs> where could my support make the biggest difference here on Taking Tuesday? And you take a few minutes and then Here's what you give. Give thanks to God for having the the means that you can give, whatever it is. And uh, we, we want to take the time to thank you here on Taking Tuesday and to hope and pray that this is going to be a very, very wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Jill, Larry. 1-800-NEW-LIFE. If you need help or you can help us, 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Thanks for listening. We hope this program has helped you by giving you insights for handling the challenges you face in your life. We want you to know that we're here for you, but you also need to know that New Life Live is a listener-supported ministry. 
to make your donation or to get any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's 1-800-639-5433 or write to us at New Life Ministries, P.O. Box 1029, Lake Forest, California, 92609. Please join us again tomorrow for New Life Live.